Hi guys. So in this video, we are gonna see nth derivative of some of the functions. So let's start with the first function. I'm assuming that y is equal to e raised to mx. So let's start and find out what could be the nth derivative of e raised to mx. Now to find out y n that is nth derivative of the given function we will always start with the first derivative. So my technique will be to first find out the first derivative then second derivative third derivative and then from first three answers we will predict that what could be the nth derivative. So let's start with the first derivative. So first derivative is given by y1. Now if I'll find the first derivative, you all know that the derivative of e raised to mx is m into e raised to mx. If I'll find the second derivative, it will be m square into e raised to mx. Similarly, if I'll try to find out nth derivative, then let's observe the pattern. So in the first derivative, if you'll observe, then the power of m is 1. In second derivative, the power is 2. So similarly, can I say that in the nth derivative, the power will be n? Yes, definitely. So similarly here, e raised to mx terms remains same in all the derivatives. So I can say that in the nth derivative also, e raised to mx will be there. So the formula for y equal to e raised to mx is yn equal to m raised to n into e raised to mx. So this is the nth derivative of e raised to mx. Let's take one more example. Now the second question is what is nth derivative of a raised to mx. Now let's start now guys, let's start with the similar technique. So here again, we'll find out first derivative, second derivative, third derivative. And from these three derivatives, we will guess what could be the nth derivative. So I'm finding the first derivative. So y1 in this case will be a raised to mx into log of a into m. Similarly, if I will find the second derivative of this term, then m and log a are already constant. So I will write it down as it is. And if I will find out the derivative of a raised to mx, then it will be a raised to mx into log a. So log a is twice. So log a square and again m that is m square. Similarly, if I will find the third that is y3. So log a square is a constant we will take it as it is m square constant we will take it as it is and then we'll find out the derivative of a raised to mx so derivative of a raised to mx is a raised to mx into log a so this will become q and m again so this will become m q so hence the formula is a raised to mx log a q and m q so guys let's predict the nth derivative so similarly, we will get nth derivative as a raised to mx as it is. Why? Because in all the three derivatives, we were getting a raised to mx term. Next, log a. Here in the first derivative, log a was having the power 1. In the second derivative, 2. And the third derivative, 3. So I can say that in, in nth derivative, that in nth derivative, this power will be n. So log a raised to n. Similar for m, so y1, so in y1, m raised to 1, y2, m raised to 2, y3, m raised to 3, so I can definitely say that yn, it will be m raised to n. And this becomes the formula for nth derivative of a raised to mx. Now, let's find out the next nth derivative. So I am considering a function of trigonometry. So let's say y is sin of ax plus b. Now guys, be careful. 
if i want to find out nth derivative of this i will again start with the y1 y2 and y3 so here let's see now y1 will be derivative of this is cos of ax plus b into a now let's observe it if i'll find out y2 from this y1 then 100% for the derivative of cos i will get minus of sin again from y2 if i'll find out y3 it will be again cos and hence it will change like cos sin cos sin but guys it will be very difficult to find out y n in that case because we don't know what is the value of n so hence to find out the nth derivative we will always convert the given function as sin only so here my job will be to convert this cos into sin and then i will find out the further derivatives so here if i will convert the cos into sin then you all know the formula that sin of pi by 2 plus theta is cos theta so i will say it is sin of pi by 2 plus theta that is ax plus b as it is and a was there so i have rewritten the y1 in terms of sin now let's find out y2 from this y1 so again the derivative of this sin is cos of pi by 2 plus ax plus b into a square because one a was there in the y1 and in the second derivative we are getting one more a so it becomes y a square but now if i'll find y3 from this cos term then again i'll get sign so it is again mismatching so i as i said previously that every time we will convert the given function in terms of sign and then we'll find out the further derivative so here i'm again converting cos in terms of sign now here this pi by 2 plus ax plus b is my theta so it is my cos theta so i will rewrite it as sin of pi by 2 plus theta because sin of pi by 2 plus theta is cos theta so this will become sin of pi by 2 plus theta now theta is this term that is pi by 2 plus ax plus b and a square as it is so now guys here i am getting pi by 2 two times so i will rewrite this as sin of 2 times pi by 2 plus ax plus b into a square this is my y2 now if i try to predict what could be the yn then it's very easy see here in y i was just having angle as ax plus b in y1 i got angle as ax plus b plus pi by 2 that is pi by 2 is only once in y2 i am getting angle as ax plus b and pi by 2 twice so it means the pi by 2 terms is increasing every time so can i say when i will find the nth derivative i will get pi by 2 n times so hence this becomes sine of ax plus b plus n pi by 2 similarly if you observe the constant a in the first derivative y1 it was just a raised to 1 in y2 it was a square and similarly in yn we will get a raised to n and this becomes our formula for the nth derivative of sine of ax plus b.